So to recap from the last videos, we kind of understand a little bit about patterns, a little bit about indicators. And here's the main points I want you guys to take away from the other videos. Indicators are not precise most of the time. So I show you guys an example of when the 90 MA, if you remember the 90 MA got disrespected a ton right here. And that's why we don't use indicators because yes, they are respected sometimes, but they're never going to be as precise as what you can get and what I'm going to teach you. So that's the recap, the one. Now the second recap, which you guys should understand is how stop loss orders work. Okay. The whole teachings of all these videos are all going to be targeted towards one thing. The market is trying to stop people out. So we need to learn where the market, okay, is targeting, which means what? Which means we need to learn where people put their stop losses. So I showed you guys a bunch of examples of stock patterns and we know, and, and why do these patterns work? Well, if we look at a stock pattern, it's because people put their stop loss above and below these trend lines. So often when we break out, we stop all these people out. So that's the second and main thing you should understand about what I'm trying to teach you. People place their stops on trend lines. People place their stops above resistance. People place their stop below support. And that's how the market works. Okay, so everything I teach is all going to be based off of where are people putting their stop losses? Why do we know people are putting their stop losses there? What might a build up of stop losses look like? Which again, a build up of stop losses would be something like this, where we build up a bunch of really, really clean algorithmic lows that all show on the chart in form of a perfect trend line. Okay, it's the same thing with support and resistance. Okay, support and resistance. Where do people put their stop losses? They put put it below support and above resistance. So where's the market going to naturally target? Below that support because that's where all the stop losses are. So that's the second thing you should understand. Now, now, now that you understand those two things, or hopefully should understand those, I'm going to be getting in a little bit of video about disciplined. Okay. And I have not started the ICT concepts yet, and I'm not going to for a few videos, but I want to say something. If I went back to trend lines right now, I would be more profitable trading trend lines now than I would have been two years ago. Now, what is the same constant variable in that statement? The same constant variable is two years ago, I traded trend lines or indicators or whatever. And by the way, this doesn't only include trend lines. I would be more profitable now trading indicators and trading trend lines now than it was two years ago. And the constant variable in that is not is 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 the trend lines and indicators. Because two years ago I was using trend lines, whatever. And imagine if I went back to trend lines now, it'd be the same thing. I'd still be using the same technique. I'd still be using the same entry model. So what's not constant? Why would I be more profitable now? not using or using trend lines and indicators than two years ago. The answer is discipline, creating rules. This is where people overlook. Okay. And I do believe that you must have some edge in the market in order to succeed, but I also believe you need to be disciplined. How many of you guys can actually wake up in the morning and go to the gym and, and go to the gym on time, wake up on time, probably, if I had to guess, probably less than 50% of you. Okay. Now, if you're not person, if you're not a person who goes to the gym and, and maybe you're, you like other things now think of the gym as maybe another thing you like to do. How many of you can actually get up, go work on yourself and, and go do what needs to be done for the day. Not a lot of people that's called discipline. Now we need to translate that into trading. How do you translate discipline in the trading? Now, this is going to be a very, very boring video, but it's also going to be the video that makes you profitable um, or, or leads you into the right direction to make you profitable. Okay. How does discipline relate to trading? Well, being disciplined is not taking 50 million trades when you're trying to go more green, not taking 50 million trades when you're red, stopping out of a loss, okay, and taking the loss like a man or a woman, okay, 
that's disciplined. Okay. One of the biggest things for me in, in how to be disciplined is, or, or what made me become more disciplined is this. When I used to take like 15 trades a day, I was just, I felt like I couldn't control myself. And in order to get disciplined in the market, you need rules. I never ever had rules until probably like a year and a half ago. And that was really bad. Now I was somewhat profitable without rules, but when I first, first started, I was not even close to profitable and I did not have rules. And the thing now is if I were to start taking indicator trend line, like indicator plays and trend line plays, what I do is I do something like this. I do max two trades a day, max two trades a day, risk, whatever on this trade. Um, what's another good one? Um, target two R like I'd have these rules in place. Okay. Two years ago, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have a plan when I went into a trade. I didn't have the discipline and I didn't have the patience to wait for my setup to, to present itself. And now if I were to go back to indicators, what I do is this. Okay. I'll tell you exactly what I do. So um, let me just do an example real quick. So if I were to go back to indicators today, I'm going to say this, my plan, what I would, I'd be, I'd be taking a play that breaks VWAP and also breaks a nine EMA. So let me just pull up a nine EMA on a chart. Okay. And let me pull up VWAP on the chart. Okay. So we now have VWAP in the 90 MA. Let me just make this a lot more clean. Um, okay. And my idea of a plan is going to be if we break above VWAP and the 90 MA, I'm going to take a long and my stop loss is going to be a closed blow. So now I have somewhat of a plan and my target is going to be 2R. So in this example here, my plan would be this. We broke above, I'd buy in the retest, and then my stop would be really if we kind of really break the VWAP or really break the EMA and both at the same time. Now, in this example, we don't break VWAP too much here. So let's say this would be a winning trade and I'd be up 2R. So this would be a good trade. I follow my plan. I have a stop loss and that's what I did. Now, two years ago, I would not have known that. Two years ago, I would have been like, Hmm, should I buy off VWAP or should I buy off EMA? Uh, I'll just I'll just take this buy. And I, I kind of question the trade. You need to have discipline and rules if you want to trade. I could go back, like I said, and, and create this plan for myself right now. Okay. The plan is being if the EMA and VWAP cross above each other, or if EMA cross above VWAP and we close above VWAP, I'll take the trade. That's my plan. I didn't have that two years ago. And that's what changed from now, from two years ago. I actually have a plan when I enter trades. Okay, let's let's go to another example. So right here, I see, okay, we broke VWAP, but the EMAs have crossed. Okay, now the EMAs have crossed. I'm going to take the trade here. Stop loss is going to be somewhere below the low. I'm going to target 2R. Nice, the trade works out. Same thing here. I'm going to do, okay, we'll, we'll buy here. Stop loss is going to be relatively below both. And I'm going to target 2R. Okay, this trade fails. I'm getting off for a loss. That's it. That's what you need. You need structure in trading. And I don't, let me see if I can pull up a tweet that I saw today. It was a very, very good tweet by my good old friend, Jade Cap. All right. And in this tweet, he basically says, Hey, shout out to him. Go follow him. Proper trading requires behavioral consistency. Without that, your edge turns dull. So it sounds very boring, but you must have the same behavior for tr each trade because if you don't, let's say you get in a trade here and I move my stop loss way down here because I'm like, oh, I think we're still going to bounce. That is not the same consistency you're not you're going to need to be profitable. You need that consistency to be profitable. And it sounds very boring, but that's how you become profitable. So from what changed from two years ago to today is I could actually go in and do a trend line or an indicator and I could actually have a plan. I know what a plan feels like. A plan and going in with a plan makes me feel so much better. I recently, I recently did something with my discord. Um, I made them take this play and I, and I wanted them to basically 
manage their risk properly okay and this is going to be a whole separate video but i think this is a good idea to kind of go over real quick so it was basically a it was a thing i did with my discord so let's look at the form so basically my questions we got 13 responses i did a little lesson on lesson on risk management okay and it was actually talked about going in with an actual plan not just not just going in buying wherever and where you think the market's going to bounce. It was going in with an actual plan, an actual risk, an actual everything. And out of the 12 people filled out, 10 people said they did it how I taught. And now look at this. Were you less emotional or more emotional than usual when controlling and knowing that what the loss would be throughout the trade? 10 people said yes, 2 people said no. So majority rules. And I said on a scale of 1 to 5, how much more did this make you feel as if you're a professional trader compared to previous days when you did not know how to manage risk? And most people said it made me feel more like a professional trader because they actually were in a trade and they're like, they actually had a plan, they actually had structure, and they're actually, they actually had like a, a, th a thing where it just, it makes you feel mature as a trader that like, oh, I'm not actually buying off of what I think's gonna happen. I'm actually buying with a plan. I know my stop loss. I know the side, like I know everything. And it feels, it's such a surreal feeling. And if you get that feeling, you will feel so much better. And you will want to do this more, trust me. Like when I used to go in with not knowing what I was doing without any plan, I, I really just, I felt lost. I felt like I was going in with a chicken on my head, head cut off and um, it just didn't help. And, and having that plan and that structure in a trade, just it makes it feel so much better. Like, you just feel so like you know you know what the loss is going to be you know what the win is going to be and i don't even want to talk about wins here because wins is not why you should be trading you you just you need to manage your risk you need to be disciplined and the biggest thing that helped me with discipline is this now this applies if you're more of a day trader not really a scalper taking like these 10 point plays if you take two losses a day I think that's a good general rule. If you take two losses in a row or two losses in a day, stop. That is being disciplined. Okay. Two losses in a day, just stop. All right. This is probably the rule that has saved me the most. Uh, now, I don't do two losses in a day. I usually do two losses in a row because I don't really take two losses in a row that much. Um, but that why why should you stop after two losses because after two losses your mental is probably much worse than what you came into the day imagine coming into the day with a fresh mind so you're coming in with a fresh mind and uh you you're like oh this is gonna be great i'm gonna look for a setup i'm gonna be patient imagine how your mindset shifts after taking two losses you get demotivated especially for newer you get demotivated. You don't. You think you don't know what you're doing, but you do. You do know what you're doing. It's just it maybe it's a bad day in the market, and that's it. You just you get demotivated, and that's why I always say stop after two trades. Because here's the thing: what's going to happen after you take two losses? So let's say I take a loss here. So let's say oh I think we're bouncing off VWAP here, and I take a loss. And then let's say I take another loss here. What's going to happen is, let's say the third trade, my plan is, oh, I'm going to buy once I see this blue line here come across this blue line here. That's going to be my buying point. And let's say the line doesn't actually cross yet, but because of my anger, because of me losing twice already, I'm going to be like, okay, it looks like we're curving up. I'm going to enter early. Oh, but what happens when I enter early? We just go down. And that's what that's one of the examples or something you're going to present prevent yourself from doing. You're not going to like not having a clear mind means entering early or maybe chasing and FOMOing, whatever it may be. And that's what's just going to happen. You're going to take two losses and then you're going to be like, oh, it looks like this is going to trigger early. I'm going to get in early and try to jump the entry a little bit. And then you lose a third time. So that's what happens when you take two losses in a row you just don't have a clear mind and that's so important to understand okay and discipline is the most important thing in the market now i challenge you to i challenge you to do something outside of trading that is also being disciplined whether it be go going to the gym three four times a week um reading a book or a chapter of a book or something because that's going to translate into you trading okay i promise you now, what I do is I go to the gym 
and I don't get lazy. I go to, I go to the gym every single day besides my rest day, obviously. And I don't get lazy. I'm disciplined. I just don't, I just don't skip a day just because. Okay. And my brain's a wired to know that. And when I go into trading, my brain's a wired to do the same thing. It's wired to, okay, if I take two losses in a day, just stop. So you have to understand that. And you have to understand that being profitable has much to do with discipline just as it does the strategy. The stra like, like I said, I could go back and probably be profitable with indicators being as disciplined as I am right now because I know when to stop. I know when to keep trading and it's just so important. So the main things you should know about discipline is you should have a rule or something that you follow, maybe like two losses in a day you just stop and you should generally, I think that's the biggest discipline rule. Now people ask me, they're like, do you have a profit target for the day? My answer is no, but if I take one to two pretty good trades, let's say two R in the morning, I will typically try to be done for the day because trading should give you freedom. And I think when you get one to two trades in a day, it's just, it's like maybe goes 20, 25 points. I think that's good enough for the day. I would be done. I would go golfing. I do whatever. Okay. I think that's a good habit to have. Um, the problem with, oh, I'm going to try to get a thousand dollars a day is if it's like three o'clock and the market is an hour left, you're going to force a setup if you're not at that thousand dollars. And that's another part of being disciplined. I think just taking good setups should be your goal. And by good setups, I mean your setup that you like to take a lot. Now, some of you, you don't know the setup you're going to like to take a lot. You're going to need to watch this whole boot camp and kind of test and see what you like best. Being disciplined also means testing out and or testing out and using a few entries. I didn't. So what I do is I take IFGs, and you, some of you are not going to know what does it. Those are yet, but that's I have my own model. I have my own thing that I've been doing for about almost two years now, and that's what I continue to do and repeat. And again, I love that the rent. If you ever seen like somewhere when your shirt it says rinse, sleep, eat, repeat. That's basically what I do. I I eat, I sleep, I have fun, I wake up, take another same model. I take it, take it every single day, and that's it. Um, and that's being disciplined, not going outside the boundaries, following those boundaries, having rules and punishing, your, punishing yourself if you break your rules. I used to go for a two mile run if I broke my rules and I and now it's, I have to like I have to up it to five because I can't like I don't run five miles that much. I run two, but if I run five miles, my legs really hurt. So it's just kind of a reminder, OK, I need to follow my rules. And it also makes you, it also helps you in the process, your health and your process, you know, because you're running, obviously. Um, and it, some, for some people, they don't, they don't like running. It's going to suck for them. For some others, they may, they may like it, but it's also going to serve them as a reminder when they're running that, okay, I need to, I need to follow my rules because they should be thinking about that. So that is what being disciplined entails, having rules. And I do have a, a little, Thing in my discord i can probably link this in the video if i don't just remind me um it's basically just like a set of rules that it's like a template i have um it's in the private section of my discord um and again i have a google doc so if i just open this this is basically this is basically like basic starting rules right here Okay, basic starting rules right here. Um, don't worry about these. You're not going to understand some of these, but these are like really basic rules right here. And you don't have to follow these. Here's the thing. When people sent me rules or when people gave me rules when I first started, um, I always thought that I had to copy them. I'm like, oh, this guy's profitable. I'm going to copy them word for, I'm going to copy them word for word, follow exactly what he's doing. What's the problem with that? Well, the problem with that is he's profitable, but you're not going to be profitable in the same way that he's profitable. Meaning you might have different rules that you like better. You might have different rules that work for you. Why? Now let's think, why might someone have different rules than, than, than someone else? Because of your brain and how your brain works. Everyone's brain is unique in this world. So what works for some person's brain is not going to work for another person's brain. And I didn't understand that. I tried copying all these. It's like if you're, it's like if you're playing a video game, like let's say 
I don't even know. I think it, like Clash Royale. I've been playing Clash Royale. Okay, it's basically a game where you have these cards you can use, or, or Pokemon cards. Let's say Pokemon cards. Everybody knows Pokemon cards. Basically, it's you copying all of someone's Pokemon cards in a match or in, in a game. Like a, I don't think people actually play the actual game anymore. People just trade them. But it's like if you buy the same exact Pokemon cards as someone else because they're really successful, their cards. But in reality, that's just copying someone and maybe they're successful with their cards because their brain works different or they see, oh, if I could sell this card for this or I post this on eBay for this, like I know what to do. But if someone copies that, they don't know what to do with those cards. It's just like trading. You need different rules because you're going to know what to do according to your brain a lot better. And that's another part of being disciplined. So I think the biggest discipline rule you can have is just if you ever take two losses in a row, just stop. Maybe if you take two losses in a session, but not in a row. So such as like New York session or the more like from 8.30 a.m. Eastern to 11 a.m. Eastern. Um, then maybe you're done for that session. Maybe you can trade after 1.30 again and try one more trade, but size down or something. Okay. You need to understand and, and be able to follow that. All right. If you cannot follow your rules, you are not going to make it on trading. Now, the funny thing is I couldn't follow my rules for probably a year and a half maybe two years. And some of you guys are probably going to be worse. Some of you guys are probably going to be better than that. But don't give up because you can't follow your rules because that's going to come over in time. And you have to understand that. Okay. If you cannot, like, you're not going to be able to follow your rules. I know it. Most of you aren't going to be able to, because I, I didn't. Sometimes like I used to average down all the time. Like if I was trying to short here or I was trying to take a sell here, I'd be like, oh, I think it's gonna go down. I just, I'd average down, I'd average down, and I'm obviously way over that now. But sometimes it's hard not to do that, like for the first year. And I can't just tell you, don't do that, because that's not, you're gonna do that. Okay, that's just part of the game. That's just how you're gonna learn, and that's what it was for me. So, um, again, have a plan, be disciplined, don't take a million trades per day. What I would start doing is, I would suggest. Maybe even use an indicator or something for this, okay? Because this is going to help you no matter what the strategy you use. Put on a 9 EMA, put on VWAP. Do the plan like how I just said. Do two quality trades a day where the 9 EMA trades above VWAP and maybe and do about a 2R take profit, okay? Put your stop a little under VWAP, maybe around this is this is size is good. And do this on a paper account for like five days. And see if you can just straight follow your plan, taking two trades a day of this happening twice. And it can be short, it can be long. And no matter if it's a win or loss, see if you can just follow this, take two trades a day and do not go outside the boundaries. If you can do that, you're probably pretty disciplined. If you can't do that, you're gonna need a lot of work. So that's the important part. Again, it doesn't matter what strategy you use. You have to be disciplined in every single strategy. And a lot of people give up because they aren't. And that's just how trading works. And that's why that's another, like people say trading or a lot of people say trading traders fail because the strategy, it's actually not because of the strategy. It's probably because their psychology and discipline is just bad. Um, and again, you have to be disciplined, follow your rules, punish yourself if you can't follow them. And before I end this video, I just want to say, don't get demotivated because you will not be disciplined for the first year you trade. I wasn't, I'm not going to pretend like I was. And you have to stick with it. When you're journaling, which I will be doing a video on this about how to journal, ask yourself, was this just being undisciplined and not following the plan? Or was this a legit losing trade where I was disciplined, but it was just a losing trade? Like you have to ask yourself why you're losing, okay? Is it because I'm not disciplined or is it because it's an actual losing trade? The newer people will find out it's probably because you're not disciplined. And maybe it wasn't even a losing trade. Maybe it wasn't even an entry at all, but you got FOMO. You you chased really high because you're like, oh my God, I missed this entry. I'm gonna chase this really high. You can't be doing that. Okay. You can't you can't chase the move after it's already made because we could reject it anytime. The entry was down here. If your plan is to enter off a of VWAP and EMA cross, you should be entering down here. You can't just enter way up here. So that's gonna be it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.